Hello. Welcome to episode 19 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And today we are going to start what I'm calling our 2021 wrong year. 2022 people. We're in 2022 cookbook challenge. Yes. To try and keep me uh, honest in my sort of New Year's resolution to cook one meal out of one of the cookbooks that we have every week. Yes. Yeah. So that's what we're going to be talking about. But we also have some news items uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the vegan episode of um, Beat Bobby Flay. Yep. That was on Food Network. Yep. I think that's where it airs. Uh, yes, that is Food Network. Yeah. So um, let's just jump into it. Go for it. So the recipe that we picked uh, was a Sloppy Joe recipe out of the um, book by Issa Chandra, Chandra Moskowitz. Moskowitz. And, Veganomicon. Yeah. And also Terry Hope uh, Romero, uh, the Veganomicon. This is the 10th anniversary edition that we have. And they call it... Um, Snobby Joes. <laughs> These are made with lentils. I'm not going to give you all the recipe because I want people to support these chefs and authors. Yes. And go find the cookbook. You might already have this cookbook um, in your pantry or on a shelf somewhere. And so. if you don't, you really should. Yeah. All of the Issa Chandra books are, are really good. I'm, I am such an Issa Chandra Moskowitz fan. Like, seriously, if I ever had the chance to meet Issa Chandra Moskowitz, I think I might fangirl out just a little bit. <laughs> right. Um you know, like seriously, I wish she was on Food Network or something. But at the same time, I'm so glad she's not. Yeah. And uh, she's pretty cool. I just love her. Yeah. Yeah. I love her philosophy. I love her recipes. Um, I I depend on her for my vegan baking recipes now. And, yeah. Like just love her. Yeah. So I picked this recipe uh, because it was kind of on the simpler side. And also we had already had uh, in our cupboards most of the ingredients. Right. I yeah. only had to buy a couple of ingredients. That, that was, yeah, that was one of your things that you yeah. said, oh, well, let's try this because I all ha I have most of right. the stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I wanted to start kind of, you know, I got to ease into this. <laughs> I didn't want to like pick like the most difficult recipe in the book or any of the books that we have to start out because then, you know, it's kind of like when you're working out, when uh -huh. you decide to start working out again, uh -huh. you don't go full bore and like, no kill yourself because the next day you're like, oh, why am I doing this? I'm so sore. This is terrible. I'm not going to do it again. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So to, to kind of break the seal on the whole challenge, I picked a recipe that was uh, a little more on the simple side. Yep. So uh, this is a lentil sloppy joe. Yes. Um, it is a typical lentil sloppy joe kind of recipe. And um, it has, you know, peppers and onions and all the typical spices that you would put in a sloppy joe. There's no huge surprises here. Um, I did make my lentils in the Instant Pot. Thank you, Instant Pot. Yes. Because it only takes like 12 minutes. Right. Yeah. 12 to 14 minutes, depending on how soft you or hard you want your lentils to come out. Right. And so, you said another bonus to the Instant Pot on this recipe is that yeah. you could make the whole recipe in one pot. Well, I made the lentils in the Instant Pot, and mm -hmm. then the whole recipe is made in one medium-sized saucepan. Okay. Yeah, so that's cool. Not yeah. a lot of cleanup. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so my thoughts on this recipe are um, it was good. They were good, but I felt like it was missing something. And after we were eating it, I think I determined that it's missing some sort of acid, or maybe that the tomato sauce I used... Wasn't acidic enough? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I and I enjoyed these thoroughly. Sloppy Joes are not a big ticket item for me. Like it's <laughs> not something that I would crave. It's yeah. not something that I would go hunting for. Yeah. Um. So it was nice that we were doing something a little bit different. Yeah, we, I, I we don't that. make we sloppy don't joes. Make we don't make sloppy joes. Yeah. Actually, this is the first time we've made sloppy joes, so um, that was pretty cool. I agree. It needed a little tiny bit of acid, maybe some apple cider vinegar, or you know me, I'll put lemon juice in anything just to brighten it up. Yeah, hair. maybe. Um, I found the flavors to be nice and earthy, and yeah. I love anything that involves lentils. So right. <laughs> that's a, a big plus. Yeah. Um, I thought the sauce was really quite lovely. It was rich. Um, the texture of the sloppy joe filling was really nice yeah i think texturally it's kind of spot on yeah it's really yeah. good um the one thing i wasn't wild about 
has nothing to do with the recipe itself, but I think the rolls that we had our sloppy joes on left something to be desired. Oh, well, um, I couldn't find any Kaiser rolls that didn't have eggs. Yeah. Oh, no, so, I know. I mean, these were supposedly a Kaiser roll. Yeah. They didn't hold up very well. They were kind of gummy. They were mushy. Yeah, a little mushy. They were just mushy so, and yeah, gummy. So, be- yeah, a better, a better roll. quality roll definitely yeah. would have helped. And you know what I would actually love to do with this? Like, take the the sloppy joe mix, but then also put on top of it, like, a crispy cabbage slaw with some acid. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. I think that would make a really good, really unusual sandwich. Like, yeah. it's almost somewhere between a sloppy joe and a Reuben. Yeah, and pulled pork kind of yeah, thing like, going yeah, exactly. on. Yeah. Like, I think that could be a, a really nice touch yeah. to it. And I think it would both brighten it up texturally and flavor wise but i agree um as a basic recipe um it it's solid oh yeah it's definitely a solid, a solid recipe. recipe just for me it yeah. was, there was just something missing yeah acid and i, I can't really put my finger on it. i think it's an acid I but think I'm, it's not, acid. I'm not really 100 percent certain now yeah. my mother um when i was younger did used to make some we used to do like the manwich in the can sloppy uh-huh. joe's things like Maybe once a month or something, mm-hmm. you know, for nights when maybe she worked late or something like that. Sure. And I always enjoyed those. I'm trying to remember if we had those when I was a kid. Maybe not often if we did. It wasn't a, a frequent thing. No. No, I don't think so. So any more thoughts on the on the uh, first recipe of our 2022? On the Snobby Joes? Yeah, Snobby Joes. No, um, although I'm not sure why they're snobby. I mean, I always appreciate a good name for a recipe, but I'm not sure why these Joes are snobby. They didn't come across as snobby. It just says in the cookbook that Snobby Joe thinks he's better than other Sloppy Joes just because there's no meat in them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's just a self-perception thing it, on the part of the Joe? On a part of Snobby Joe himself. Okay. Yeah, in the cookbook, it's just kind of a little tongue-in-cheek thing. Okay. That well, they're snobby because Joe thinks he's better than the other sloppy Joes because there's no meat in these. Well, maybe we need to tell Joe that he needs to not be so judgy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's nothing snobby about the recipe, that's no, for sure. nothing at all. There's nothing complicated. <laughs> there's nothing, you know, hugely elevated. There's nothing yeah. complicated. So, yeah. you know, just... Yeah, it's so I enjoyed our first foray into the making a recipe out of one of the cookbooks that we have, mm-hmm. and I'm looking forward to next week's. Have you decided which cookbook you're going to pull from? No. Because we have quite an array of vegan cookbooks we that do. we have not been able to fully peruse. Right, and I have gone through and marked some things. So awesome. I have some things in mind, but I haven't pinned it, anything down just yet. Now, you all will notice that Christine is doing most of the talking in this segment, and she's also doing most of the cooking, simply because um, she's retired, and I'm going back to work, work full-time as of tomorrow. Yeah. And so she is the one who usually keeps us fed. Yeah, I am the house frau. She is the house frau. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay, well, moving on, i just like to <laughs> mention um, a couple of news items, vegan news items that were in the news recently. Uh, One of them is Silk is releasing a new milk product. Um, It's called Next Milk, and it's supposed to uh, mimic the taste and consistency of cow's milk. What do you feel about that? Well, it's funny because you told me about this and I'm like, wow, I wonder how necessary that is. I mean, obviously I have not had cow's milk in a long time. Now, prior to us going vegan, I did drink quite a bit of milk yeah I, we kept skim milk in the house all the time because i loved it yeah i never um, was a big milk you weren't drinker. you weren't a big milk drinker but i just loved my milk and um giving it up was no problem at all you yeah. know i i didn't miss it terribly upon giving it up yeah. um and now like i really don't have a go-to pour milk in a glass kind of milk unless it's like chocolate almond milk right chocolate almond milk chocolate is so almond good. milk is so good <laughs> yeah it's ridiculously good and yeah we like don't the keep it dark in the house. chocolate yeah so almond good milk. which yeah. is why we don't keep it in the house because it's just so good it is really good yeah well i can tell you 
Um, in an article I was reading, it says that 53% of omnivores do not drink plant milk because of the taste. They don't like the taste of it. So there is a market for it. That's why Silk is doing this. Well, I mean, then that makes good sense. So I would say for those, for those who are, you know, perhaps making the conversion, yeah. you know, from being an omnivore to being a vegan or a vegetarian, right. um, I think that's absolutely great. In personal experience, yes, I was a milk drinker pre-vegan. Yeah. Um, I am no longer a milk drinker. No, and I don't think I want a product that tastes like uh, cow's milk. <laughs> I don't either because honestly, I'm not sure I remember what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, oh, Sarah Sullivan from Sarah's Vegan Kitchen. Yeah. Um, check out her page and her YouTube channel if you haven't because she's got some really good information and recipes out there. But she on Instagram... Uh, got this product mm-hmm. and tried it and did not like it. Really? She says it had a, kind of a weird, slimy oh. mouthfeel to her. But, to she's, her. but sure. she also said it's been so long since she's had dairy milk, dairy milk that... that maybe it is really mimicking. Right. She said she also didn't like the aftertaste, which also could be that it tastes like dairy milk. It could be. Because I think anybody who's been vegan for any length of time is not going to like the taste of dairy milk. Right. You yeah, know. I have no idea anymore what it tastes like. Yeah. And so I kind of doubt that I would like it. And I yeah. know that if I want a milk to drink, I'm more than happy to drink cashew milk or hazelnut milk yeah. or walnut milk. Right. Um, I'm not a huge fan of soy or oat milk. Just I don't love the flavor. But there are plenty of things out there that I really love the taste of. So yeah. I don't think I need something that mimics dairy milk. Yeah. But apparently 53% of omnivores want it to taste like dairy milk. That's a heck of a statistic. So you know what? Go silk for filling that need. Yeah. There's that other one too, that not milk, which is a similar product. That's that's pea protein. The silk one is a blend of oat milk and coconut. Mm -hmm. And what else? Oh, it's a... Oh, and soy. It's a blend of oat, um, oat milk, coconut milk, and soy. Okay. And it also is fortified fortified uh, with all the things that dairy milk has. So it mm-hmm. has calcium and all the vitamins, vitamin, vitamin D A, D, a, B12, yep. um, all that good stuff. phosphorus, riboflavin. Yep. They added all that in there. So mm-hmm. it's like um, nutritionally uh, the Very same, similar. Matching, yeah, Got matching it. a dairy milk. So I do know like two years ago, I accidentally put dairy milk into my coffee at my mother's house. Yes. And it was terrible. Yes. I it remember. tasted rancid. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. I even had to check her milk to make sure it hadn't gone bad. But mm-hmm. it, it was just my taste yeah. had changed. I remember you telling yeah. me that, which was which is incredible because yeah. before we went vegan, Christine was all about... Half and half. Half and half. In, in my coffee. coffee. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't milk. It was half and half. So Yeah. If I can find that silk hack, half and half, if, if you're a, a half and half coffee person... Um, if you like like a lot of cream in your coffee and you like it to be creamy, Silk does make a half and half product, yeah. which I can never find around us. Um, and it only comes in what half? No, pints mm-hmm. or quarts? I can't remember. I think it's pints. Yeah, it only comes in like pint size, but it's really good. It's really good. Yeah, it's kind of incredible actually. Yeah. Okay, so um, but that's all I have to say about that silk product. Another yeah. another cool thing that I read in the news was that Google searches for vegan food near me rose by 5,000% in 2021. That is so cool. That's amazing. 5,000%. That, that is so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So a lot of people are out there looking for vegan food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that's just us. <laughs> Maybe the 5,000% was just us. It's simply us traveling around <laughs> looking for vegan restaurants. Yep. <laughs> no, no, because we usually use Happy Cow. And we I do. can tell, I to all those people out there Googling vegan food near me, don't bother. Right. Just get the Happy, get Cow, Happy Cow app and it know, it'll, you know, it has like location. It mm-hmm. knows where you are and it'll show you every vegan, vegetarian, even when, and, and you can uh, limit what the searches are. Yeah. Um, you can filter the searches. It'll tell you every restaurant, you know, that's near you that has vegan food. So. Right. That has even just has vegan options. options. Yeah. It doesn't even have to be fully vegan restaurants. Right. So. And it also has like reviews of those restaurants by people that have gone there and sometimes pictures if people mm-hmm. post pictures of their meals and We've stuff. We've done so. a few reviews on Happy Cow, haven't we? Uh, yeah. We have a number of reviews on okay. Happy Cow. Cool. Yeah. It's a really cool app. 
Yep. We like the happy cow. Yeah. Okay. So that's all I really have to talk about in the news. There are other things, but I want to get to this Bobby Flay thing. The vegan chefs on Beat Bobby Flay, which aired, I think, Friday. I think it aired Friday. Okay. I found it on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube for $2. Mm Mm-hmm. So I paid the $2 so that I could watch it because I wanted to see what it was all about and to be able to talk about it. Yep. So um, there are two chefs, two vegan chefs, both women, uh, Tamara Dyson, and her. she has a restaurant called Solely Vegan. She's kind of like a big deal in California. She yeah, has she, like four vegan restaurants. Yeah. So she's... She's, she's not new on the scene. She's, no, definitely not. She's kind of a big deal in the vegan chef. And then the um, kind of what I guess you call the underdog... Uh, Zadira Mason uh, from uh, her restaurant's called Veggies. Uh, the Veggies. That's what it's called. <laughs> the Veggies. <laughs> I was looking for more there. Nope, just <laughs> it's the just veggies. called The Veggies. It's in Alabama. Um, apparently, I read an article about her and her and um, uh, Tamara, mm-hmm. they got, they, I guess they got along swimmingly. Oh, awesome. Yeah. So they were kind of like kindred spirits. That's great. So they're gonna they're like working on like a collaboration. A collaboration. And also, oh, that's great. Yeah. So that's one really cool thing that yes. came out of it. That's amazing. Yeah. So um, and, and go like kind of like go to Mara for you know who has more of a foothold in the business yeah. for you know taking a, a younger, less experienced chef and yeah. you know doing something collaborative. That's just beautiful. I love it. Yeah, I think I think that's really great. The the kind of newbie chef Adira. Is that how Adara. you say Adara? Mm-hmm. Is that how you say her name? It's A D Y R E. I think it was Adara. Mason. That's how they said it. Yeah. Um, anyway, she became vegan. They didn't say this on the show, but I read an article about her. And she's she became vegan when her mother became uh ill. Mm-hmm. And she I, I think it was cancer. Her mother had cancer. And she was trying to help turn her mother's health around with a vegan diet. So that's how she got she was actually an engineer. Oh, cool! And she quit her engineer's job, and nice. uh, yeah, and made it made her way into the the culinary world of vegan restaurants. Yeah, that's so awesome. Yeah, way cool. And they're both self taught. I think I think they are. Yeah, yeah. They both mentioned that on the show yeah. being self taught chefs. So that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, one thing I thought was odd is that now I know they like to get like more kind of famous people as judges. Mm-hmm. But none of the judges were vegan. Well, I don't know if I would say that that's odd. I think that I kind of expected that, that the judges wouldn't be vegan. Yeah. That didn't surprise me, really. Um, I do wish that there had been one vegan judge. Right. Um, or at least someone who has a, a good deal of expertise in vegan cuisine. Yeah. But... I really don't think things would have been much different <laughs> in terms of the judging and, and all of right. that. I, I don't think the result would have been that much different. Right. So if you're familiar or not familiar with how the Beat Bobby Flay show works, um, the two chefs come on and then they cook head to head. Bobby picks an, an ingredient. They use that ingredient and they cook head to head against each other to see who's going to then cook against then cook, Bobby. Then cook against Bobby Flay. Yes. Yeah. So they picked, what was it, potatoes? It was red potatoes. Yeah. So, yeah, so Bobby Flay picks the ingredients, potatoes, red potatoes. Now, potatoes uh, are great as an ingredient, okay, and a staple, certainly, in yeah. a, a vegan diet. Absolutely. We love our potatoes. Yeah. The thing is, um, in that first round, they only have 25 minutes to cook, and we all know that potatoes require time. Well, yeah, they can. Well, they already have, they have pre-boiling water and everything. Everything's like set up. So you can, yes, you can cook potatoes. If you are, if the water's already boiling, you can cook boiled potatoes in, you know, like 15 minutes. So. But still, that's 15 minutes out of the 25 that you have. Right. So, you know, that's, that's not a small thing. That's more than half of your time. Right. So it's something to consider. Right. So the Adira Mason, she made a uh, German potato salad. Yes, she did. Which um, I thought was interesting and also a little safe, which I think the judges also said it was a little... They did, yeah. A little on the safe side. Um, and what did Tamara make? She made a coconut potato 
it was like a soup. I can't remember what she called it. Yeah, it's a New Orleans thing. Yeah, and it looked beautiful. Yeah, so, <laughs> so she made. Yeah, so there we go. So I she had to go back a, to the video. A I'm coconut, a coconut potato etouffee. Etouffee, yes, mm-hmm. which is a Louisiana thing, mm-hmm. um, and and uh, also something I guess that normally is like cooked for Low a very and long time yes. and has like com- a lot of complexity of flavor and everything. Yes. So Tamara won. They liked her dish better. Yeah, and I think it it really was because they felt like uh, Adara played it a little bit safe with the potato salad. Yeah. Um, And they appreciated the fact that Tamara, even within the time limit, got some real depth of flavor into her etouffee yeah, uh, it, I through mean, it, the use of coconut milk. Yeah, it was pretty impressive. Yeah, it yeah. looked beautiful. I really did wish that I could have tasted it. Yeah. <laughs> Because I love me a good soup. Yeah. I was a little disappointed. I was kind of hoping the underdog, you know, because I don't know. She's just, she's more up and coming. Sure. And I was just kind of hoping that she would win. Well, you always want the underdog to win. But, you know, in this case, I think I I was thrilled for either because just the idea of a vegan chef going up against Bobby Flay was really kind of awesome. So... Yeah, way awesome. And and uh, both women and both uh, women of color. Yes. Which I thought was cool. Yes, very cool. Yeah. Very cool. So and we go into the uh, the Beat Bobby Flay round. Yes, we do. And so the winning uh, chef gets to pick the ingredient that Bobby has to cook. Well, they get to choose their signature dish. It's not right. just an ingredient. It's, right. It's a dish. I'm making a dish. Right. And Bobby has to make a version of that dish. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I misspoke. It's all good. Yeah. And so uh, Tamara picked a uh, vegan a burger. burger. A burger. Yeah. Which, uh, if you know, Bobby Flay is a burger guy. He is. His he is restaurants are burger joints. Known worldwide for yeah. his burgers. Um, you had some an opinion about um, Bobby Flay having some things to say about I, vegan cooking that you weren't too fond of. Well, yes, I do. I think that whenever you're in a position... Like somebody like Bobby Flay is, he's kind of at the top of the culinary industry. He's a world-renowned chef. He's got, you know, 14 different TV shows. I mean, he has his own line of cat food we just found out, which is hysterical. No, he doesn't have it. His cat does. Right. Nacho has his cat (laughs) named Nacho. Nacho. It has a cat food brand, you know, so he's just everywhere within the the industry yeah and, and and your mother has a crush on him and my mother has a crush on him <laughs> yes my my niece will be thrilled that we mentioned that on the show by the way be thrilled yeah that, that it's kind of a little inside grandma fam- has family a thing joke. for Bobby Flay yeah absolutely <laughs> but anyway um, I I think it's important to really be mindful of what you say about the cuisine that you're cooking. So it did bother me a little bit. Now, I understand that Bobby Flay is not, in general, a vegan chef. It is not his metier. Um, That's fine. Totally cool. But to make very clear twice that he would rather be cooking anything but vegan food. Yeah. And that he he finds vegan cooking to be hard... I think it's a little irresponsible. Well, I mean, it is just his opinion, but yeah, he has a pretty wide audience. And yeah. to make it sound like cooking vegan food is difficult mm-hmm. is, is not really good. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, I don't think cooking vegan food is any more difficult than cooking any omnivore food. food. Right. You have to be a little bit more mindful, again, is the word. Because, yeah. yes, there are things that you are not going to use. You're not going to use meat. You're not going to use dairy. You're not going to use eggs. So if right. you're accustomed to using those things, yeah, you're either just going to leave them out entirely or find substitutes for them. Yeah. So I understand that it might take a little more thought, but I don't think, technically speaking, it's more difficult no, not at all. So I, mean, I, I don't really, think so. I really do wish that that Bobby had that his demeanor had been a little friendlier toward the idea of cooking vegan food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can I can understand that. Yeah, totally. Um, okay, so now Tamara's burger is a burger I think that she makes in her restaurant. Yes. And what all was in it? 
Um, she started with mushrooms and tomatoes and onions. And so she made this, you know, really kind of lovely vegetable base. And then the binder was vital wheat gluten. Right. Yeah. And then the burgers were baked in the right. oven. Um, right. Because of the vital wheat gluten, it's not something you could throw into a fryer. You wouldn't want to put it in a fryer you or put not. it on a pan, in a frying in pan. In a frying pan. Probably. No. So you just bake them off. Yeah. She also put a, a great deal of care into her toppings. She did a uh, cashew cheese sauce. She did homemade pickles. Yeah, which she made her own I pickles. I always appreciate because, yeah. oh my God, nothing tops a burger like a really good pickle. Yeah. Again, the whole cucumber thing. I'm sorry, but a burger needs a pickle. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so she made the pickles right, right then and there. Right then and there, yeah. which I thought was great. And then, you know, just beautiful standard burger toppings, lettuce, tomato, onion, yeah, um, the cheese sauce. And she and did like a double decker. She did do a double yeah. decker. Yes. On a lovely looking bun. I don't know what kind of bun it was, but it looked good. Yeah. And then Bobby, he did like a chickpea based yes. burger. He did. And he deep fried them. He did. <laughs> he kind of battered and deep fried them. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, so it's kind of cheating. <laughs> no, I don't know that that's cheating. Although I did think that that would would have put Bobby's Burgers solidly in the win column for you. Because for me, yeah. after we went to Good and Evil up yeah. in Buffalo. Um, Good and Evil in North Tonawanda. That, there we go, up in North Tonawanda yeah. um, when Christine had her hood dipped burger. Gotta get the hood dip uh, vegan burger there. She just yeah. decided that all burgers should be fried. Yeah. Period. It was so good. <laughs> and Bobby Flay made also made homemade uh, onion rings. Yes. To go on top of his burger. Yes. And he I said did. he'd never made an onion ring without buttermilk. He usually uses, a, he usually, you know, dips in buttermilk. Before and I he... really thought it was hysterical that he asked the audience if buttermilk was vegan. Right. <laughs> I don't know if he was kidding or if he was going for dramatic <laughs> effect, but no, Bobby Flay, buttermilk is not. Vegan. Yeah. yeah, no. Um, but he made uh, he made his onion rings and they looked yeah. really, really good um, yes. by soaking them in oat milk. Um, right. He used he oat did milk. His, he did his batter with oat milk mm-hmm. instead of um, buttermilk, buttermilk and they looked beautiful. So they did. I would have been into those onion rings. And here's something we learned. He calls that when you put like uh, something crunchy like potato chips or something, he calls it crunchified. Yes. And he's actually trademarked the that term word. crunchified. Yeah. So apparently, I'm I'm assuming in his restaurant, you it must be. get a burger and then ask for it, it to be crunchified it with various be. things. Yes. Either with yeah. potato chips or onion rings or, right. you know, something, something crunchy, crunchy on it. Yeah. I've never been to a Bobby Flay establishment, so no. I don't know. But... I'm but imagining yeah, he, he's trademarked the word crunchify. Who knew? Who that, knew? Who knew that you could personally trademark a word? Right? Did he put a vegan cheese on his burger, or was it no cheese? He did. He, he put did. A, a commercially available vegan cheese. Okay. I don't know what brand. I don't either. He but did. it was a sliced vegan cheese. Okay. So when it went to the judges, again, this is a separate set of judges, and uh, it's blind. They don't watch them. Right. Cook. Exactly. They, right. Don't they know come who in made right what. at the end. They come in right at the end. Yeah. yeah. These judges also not vegan. No. The judges in the final judging were Sarah Gore, who it said chef and TV host, but I looked her up. I can't find anything that says she's a chef. <laughs> no? She's the host of uh, like a morning talk show in New York City. Mm-hmm. It's called New York Live. Okay. So maybe she's a home chef. Um, Justin Bazderic. Yes. Who is a, a chef and owner of several Mexican restaurants. Yeah. I think he has three or four Mexican yeah. restaurants. In uh, New York City. In New York, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but not vegan. No, not vegan. And then uh, Trisha Williams, who is the chef and founder of Daily Dose, which is a like food a food delivery. Yeah, it's a food yeah. delivery system. System. A food, de- a food well, delivery service. No, that's that's about right. A service. It's a. Yeah. It's similar to a Blue Apron or a, right. Um, but it's not vegan. But it's not vegan. No. So those were the judges, and they um, they seem to like both burgers. Yes, and really like the crunchified thing mm-hmm. with the deep fry burger with the. Oh yeah, onion rings. Every, on top. Everyone, everyone did say that the onion rings were the genius of yeah. of Bobby's. Burger. Yeah, but he um, made the mistake of putting a barbecue sauce on it. 
and the barbecue sauce it took over the yeah it took over the flavor the flavor of yeah. everything so it was probably kind of i would imagine i don't know obviously i couldn't taste it but it was probably a little bit one note with the barbecue sauce i would think in terms so of too flavor but their real um critique on bobby's burger was that the texture was off oh that yeah. it didn't really have a burger texture to right. it and that it was falling apart a little bit. Yeah. Um, like the, some of your garden burgers will do. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and so with Tamara's burger, um, they did have a little bit of a critique on the cheese sauce. They felt like it was a little overpowering. Yeah. Maybe there was a little too much on it. One of the judges wanted the pickle to be crunchier right. than it was. Yeah. So she may have overcooked her pickles a little well, bit. Well, it's the thing with fresh made pickles. Right. Because they're in a warm pickling liquid. Yes. You know, they normally normally you would put those in a jar and and chill them, and then they would crisp and up. they would crisp back up. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. Um, but they all gave her really really high marks for the texture and flavor of her burger. Yeah, yeah. Oh, one other thing about that last judge, uh, Trisha Williams. Yeah, is she's also uh, she's also like a nutritionist. Oh, cool. Which which is interesting, but well, they didn't they didn't mention anything about like nutritional benefits of being vegan or they stayed away from any kind of political discussion well, about yeah, vegan as, and non-vegan food. So as, as well, they should, I don't feel like that's the place for it. Yeah. It's not entertaining, I guess. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's people who watch Bobby, who watch beat Bobby Flay are watching for yeah. Bobby Flay. They're not watching because he's cooking vegan food or right, right. any other. I just think it would have been so cool if they had one vegan chef as a judge. Well, yes, that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been great. So, now, um, well, wait, the, what? the guy, the shark tank guy, he's vegetarian. Yeah. Shark tank guy. And I can't, I'm sorry. I can't remember the name of the other woman, but she's very popular on food network. Um, her name's Sunny. Sunny. I yeah. I can't remember her last name. Um, me neither. Uh, but yeah, he's vegetarian. Yes. So shark tank and, and Sunny were like the, uh, first judges. The first round. And judges. then they kind of like. You know, they're the ones that rib Bobby Flay throughout the entire show. Yeah. And then they go away when the blind taste test judges come in at the end. Exactly. Yeah. But no, no vegan, no, no vegan, vegan judges. judges. Yeah. But I think that's okay. I mean. Well, yeah, I mean, I w- it was still entertaining. Well, absolutely. I mean, yeah. also, I don't think you need to be an expert in a specific type of cuisine in order to say whether or not you think that cuisine is good. Right. You know, I'm, I love Indian food. Am I an expert in Indian food? Not by any stretch of the imagination, but does that mean I can't tell you what I think of it? No. No. Yeah. You're right. Because here we are going to the restaurants and telling you what we think of food and we're not experts in <laughs> any kind not. of food. So we're not experts in know. anything really. So I don't I don't think the fact that there wasn't a vegan chef as part of the judges panel, I don't find that to be problematic. No, I did, I just thought it would be more fun if there was one. Well, sure, but I think because you want the fight between the omnivore chef and the vegan chef, that's <laughs> what you were bit, looking for. A little bit. You want drama. A, a little bit. So we'll tell you who won. Spoilers. If you don't want to know who won, um, stop it now. Yes. If you do want to know who won, I'll tell you right now who won. Mm-hmm. It was uh, Tamara. It was. Yeah, it was Chef Tamara Dyson. It was Chef Tamara Dyson. Beat she beat Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay. And that's a cool thing to have on your resume. It really is. <laughs> it really is. I think that's great. Yeah. So we really enjoyed watching it. And I was glad that I was able to find it for purchase because we do not have the Food Network. We don't we have don't. cable. So. Right. so, I mean, I love the future now for, for TV that you can just pick whatever, pick and choose what you want to watch. You're not forced into, you know what I mean? To a certain degree. You're not forced to watch things that you don't really want to watch. I mean, not that you're ever forced to watch See, things you don't want to watch. But I'm saying watch. you don't have to do that, like, flipping through the dial thing that you used to do. We used to do when you had cable. Well, you know, sure. Trying but... to find something good on. You yeah. Know? I mean, I, I don't mean to be playing devil's advocate or anything, but, but... you still flip through netflix looking for something or you still you flip do. through amazon prime looking for something i or guess you flip through hulu looking for something yeah so it's the same it's just the context it's changed i guess it's the con. there's just i think there's just less garbage without having cable 
You know, there's a lot of garbage TV out there. There's a ton of garbage TV, but now the garbage TV is packaged in the same way as everything else. And you can choose to watch the garbage TV or not. Right. Instead of it just automatically coming to the big box in your living room. Right. You know, as a de facto (laughs) thing, you get to decide whether the garbage TV happens or not. And we don't have to be barraged with... uh, ads for you know Seriously, various medications because we only do um because we only watch tv through streaming services anymore um we're so unused to commercials commercial television yeah it's hysterical so anytime like we are staying in a hotel somewhere or we're even at my parents house and watching regular tv yeah and the commercials come on it's it's like culture shock right it's like wait a minute what is this and why is this annoying thing interrupting my tv show right Excuse me. <laughs> and why is every other ad for some pharmaceutical product? Uh, well, you know? that's that's a longer conversation. I know. That is, that's another show. That's a really long conversation. Yeah. Yeah. So I enjoyed the Beat Bobby play. Yes. Did you? I, I did. Yeah. I did. It thoroughly. was fun. I was I was glad that yeah. I was glad that you found that. Yeah, my mother used to like love to watch. I would watch go and um visit with her and wa- and watch Bobby Flay. Yep. She I don't think she had a crush on her. No, that's it, just my like mom. your mother, but yeah. <laughs> Yep. Mom has a thing for Bobby Flynn. Yeah. So is there uh, anything else that you wanted to discuss? Okay. I suppose I can talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we've uh, been kind of hinting We've been hinting that, there that there's something some, coming. some other news coming, and, and there is. So um, one of the things that I've been doing for the past several months, in addition to being Christine's sidekick on the podcast... Um, <laughs> sidekick yeah, totally. that's funny i'm your sidekick on the podcast um is i have gotten into narrating and producing audiobooks yay and currently i have um five published audiobooks through audible uh-huh. um which you can see on the audible or amazon website right um and i have two more that are just about to come out and i have another four that i'm still working on yeah so i've um, it, it's been very surprising to me how, um, how much work I've gotten yeah, a lot of work. as a narrator. Like, oh, I thought you were going to say how much work it is. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not surprised how much by work how you've much gotten. work it is, but how much work I've been offered as a narrator. I'm, I'm not it's... surprised. You have a very pleasant speaking voice. Well, thank you. But I didn't think that I would get quite so many offers, um, quite so quickly. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for that. But, um, Today, I just finished recording and editing the book that I am most excited about. It is the first book that I was offered. It's a little overdue. It was supposed to be out about a month ago. Uh Um, But because I was foolish and took on other projects that kind of got in the way, it pushed this one back a little. But the title of the book that is going to be coming out... um, in audiobook form within probably the next two weeks right. is Confessions of an Animal Rights Terrorist by Karen Levinson. Yeah. And Karen Levinson is this super cool lady. Like, oh my gosh, I really hope I get to meet her someday because she's awesome. I feel like she's kind of a kindred spirit. Yeah. But she is, uh, she used to work in advertising and she is now an animal rights activist and uh, politician in Guelph um, in Southern Ontario, Uh not far from Toronto. And it's really the story of her campaign to, through a global boycott of Canadian seafood to end the commercial harp seal hunt. Right. So really the book is a memoir. First and foremost, it's a memoir and it's kind of Karen's life story, but told through the lens of being an animal rights activist. And it's just absolutely wonderful. It's informative. It is funny. It is heartfelt. It is devastatingly sad. It is, it's really just gorgeous. Um, Of the books that I have had the privilege to narrate thus far, this has been by far my favorite. I had so much fun on this book. Um, I really- It seems to be a very well-written book. It's beautifully written. Yeah. It is just beautifully written. And- you know, to take on topics because 
through the through the book, we're not just dealing with animal rights activism and, you know, the realities of the commercial seal hunt, but also some really difficult realities in Karen's personal life. Right. Um, you know, she has a had a terminally ill partner at one time and that partner was abusive. And so she she goes through all of these things. Um, and it does. It feels like you're right there with her. And it's it's a very conversational, very down to earth, absolutely delightful book. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm looking forward <clears throat> to hearing your audio book version of it, um, because when I read, I fall asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> so audio books are the way to go for me. Yeah. So I'm look, really looking forward to reading the finished product. And that's hearing. And the that's great because this will actually be the first of my audiobooks that Christine will listen to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've listened to tidbits here and there yeah, yeah. of ones that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm looking forward to listening to this one in its entirety. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really hoping, like I, I did the final listen through and I, I think it sounds pretty good. So I really hope that it, it actually does. Yeah. And we'll give you more information um, when it's available for purchase. Right. Um, and how to get it and where to find it and all that jazz. All that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Might even be able to give you some cool like, discount, codes, discount codes, stuff like that. like that. Yeah. yeah sure. Um, yes. But I can't tell you what the publication date is because I don't know what the, we publication, don't know yet. Date, what the publication date is. We won't know in advance. Yeah. I'll just be informed someday. <laughs> right. They'll just say it's it's available. Yeah. And as soon as we know, uh, you guys will know. You we'll will know. We'll definitely um, give you that information when it comes into us. Yep. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. As as you tend to do as the house frau. <laughs> if you have any recipes that you think I should be trying in our cookbook challenge, let me know what the recipe is and what the cookbook is because I might have the book. So send me an email or if you just recipes that you want me to try because you think they're great recipes, email us at compassionandcucumbers uh, at gmail.com. Uh, We still have our fundraiser going for Mockingbird Farms Animal Sanctuary on our Buy Me a Coffee site. That's Buy Me a Coffee backslash cucumbers. And the first $50 donor gets a limited edition Compassion and Cucumbers t-shirt. Yes. Yeah. So get those uh, those donations in, and we really want to give them away. We do. We, we want to really give. We want to give the t shirts away, and we want to give the money to Mockingbird Farms. Oh, we so do they need the money this time of year, especially because they're getting multitudinous deliveries of hay to try and keep all the animals fed and warm during yep. the winter months. And uh, what else? What other housekeeping? Uh, you can find our website at www.compassionandcucumbers.com. Indeed. And uh, I think that's it. I do think that's it. Yeah. So stay tuned next week to find out what recipe I have chosen and from which book it has come. I don't know why I said it that way. I don't either, but like it I'm works. Speaking old English no, now. It works. It works. Go with it. Go with it. Tune ye in next week. Tune ye in. I love to it. To find out what recipe. I love it. Thy am making. Thy? I don't know. No, you lost it there. Sorry. <laughs> But tune ye in. It's good. <laughs> tune it's good. ye in. It's good. All right. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And until next week, we'll see you. Have a great week. Bye bye. <laughs> if you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it.